Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On today's program, Reverend Maybe's message is titled, Worship God in Spirit and in Truth. And our musical guest is Suzanne de Groot. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. And He will be your strength. There are times when troubles surround you. Do not, do not be discouraged. For the Lord, He is with you. Yes, the Lord is on your side. Suzanne de Groot for that anointed song. And I have a powerful word for you folks. I have a word that can dynamically change a Christian's life from being mellow to being on fire, moved in revival, to be even a revivalist. This message came to me early in my walk with God, within the first year. And it revolutionized my walk with the Lord. And I was just so happy to be able to share it with you. And this message, I believe, is the answer to why some Christians are not on fire for God. How many Christians do you know, do we know? They got a foot in heaven, but they don't have a whole lot of heaven in them. I believe it's because they haven't got a hold of this message I'm going to share. It's a dynam dynamic message to walk in the new nature. You see, what happens is, when someone receives Jesus Christ as Lord, they believe he died on the cross, he rose from the dead. They sincerely ask him in to be their Lord. They speak out, Jesus Christ, you're my Lord. Their old sinful nature, I'll call it the OSM, it gets a death blow because they receive Christ. And a new nature enters us, a nature that loves only what Jesus loves, born of God. Behold, old things have passed, all things have become new. But that old sinful nature that's been running our lives doesn't want to stay dead. And what can happen is that a Christian, if they don't get a revelation of this message I'm going to share, they will try to serve Christ in a mellow way, but still walking in the old sinful nature that has knowledge of good, knowledge of evil, choosing their best they can, the good side but not walking in revival power, not on fire, not zealous for the word of God and to share God's love with people and win souls and go to church and be on fire for God. <laughs> so this is the message that did it for me and I just pray it will really bless you that I'm going to share. 
And it began with one scripture that says, we of the circumcision worship God in the spirit and in truth. And so I asked God by the Holy Spirit to reveal to me what, what this is, because I wanted to be of the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and in truth. And then this whole message unfolded. How the old sinful nature that I got from Adam and Eve needed to be put to death that only out of death to the old sinful nature would the true life of Christ grow and be strong in my life and in your life. Because the new life that you become is a babe. It needs to grow. And the death has to come to the old nature first and it needs to stay dead. And before the end of this message, I will share with you how I believe God has revealed to me for it to be more dead and more dead and more dead and stay dead. <laughs> And I, I laid hold of this message, and, and I've been running with it now uh, 46, 47 years. I want to share with you. Let's hear the words of God about it first. Okay, dear ones. Ephesians 4, 21 to 24. If indeed you have heard Jesus and have been taught by him, is the truth is in Christ, that you put off, it's something you do, you put off concerning the former conduct, the old man, old sinful nature, the flesh, the one we got from Adam and Eve, which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man which was created according to God in true holiness and righteousness. So when you become born again of God, Jesus Christ is your Lord, you got this new nature, but it has to grow. And it says there very clearly, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. How does your mind get renewed? You know, they talk about brainwashing. Your mind needs to be renewed by the word of God, by you hearing the word of God like you do on Eternally Yours Telecast, by you hearing the word of God when you go to church and uh, a preacher really teaches the word of God. Your mind is renewed when you hear Jesus, when you draw close and dear to him. In prayer, praise, and the word, I think those are three powerful keys. Galatians 2.20 says when I'm teaching about death to the old and life to the new and growth in the new. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ, that means the old nature, old SN, old sinful nature, the flesh, put to death with Christ. It is no longer I who live, that old nature, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in this mortal body, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me and loves me. And again, Romans 6.4, Therefore, we were buried with Christ through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, that we should walk in newness of life. So being buried with Christ is the circumcision. In other words, it's a spiritual operation of God, and I think I have some scriptures to speak of that before this message is over, God willing, time-wise. The old sinful nature is circumcised, put to death on the cross of Christ. The new nature will grow. Romans 7, verse 4. Therefore, my brethren, you also become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to, to Jesus, who was raised from the dead, that you would bear fruit to God. So you're dead to the law. You're dead to the law as you are dead to the old sinful nature. What is the law? The law is sin and death. You sin, you die. You have troubles from your sin. But Christians, we are under a new law. Hear with your heart. Romans 8, verse 2. There is now therefore no condemnation for you in Christ, for the law of the Holy Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed you from the law of sin and death. And that's it more manifest as you walk in the new nature and the old nature is put to death by the cross of Christ, the circumcision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 4, 10 to 12 is some of the key powerful words that I have been quoting most days since I discovered this message. And it's a key. Remember I said I will do my best to give you some keys, how the old nature stays dead 
was put to death by the death of Christ, but stay dead, deader in the doornail. So your new nature is soaring and you're on fire for God and you love the word and you love to be in revival and you love to be around true Christians. You love to go to church. That old sinful nature is put to death by the word of God and your choice. You choose to walk in your new nature. And here are some of the scriptures that helped me all these years. And here's a dynamo one right now, 2 Corinthians 4, 10 to 12. I memorized it many years ago. Always, the word always, bearing about in your body the death of Christ, the death of Christ, the dying of Jesus, that the life of Jesus Christ will be manifesting in your mortal body. Always bearing about in your body the death of Christ. So always means ongoing, dear ones. You don't just do it once you got it for the rest of your Christian walk. <laughs> to choose to walk in your new nature and use God's word to keep the old man dead. So always bearing about in your body the death of Christ, that the life of Christ will be manifest in your mortal body. And then it says, always delivered to the death of Christ, the life of Jesus be manifest in your mortal body. Then death works in us, but life in you. I've said another telecast, I'll say it again. If the death of Jesus wasn't working in Reverend Audrey Mabley, the life of Jesus wouldn't be working into the telecast and into your dear lives when I speak the word of God, Sunday services, Jesus revival and healing services, which we're praying to have again soon. The life of Jesus will work through my life as I am bearing the death of Christ to that old man, the old nature. It's just what God says. We of the circumcision will worship God in the spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. It's truth. It's Bible. Colossians 3, 1 to 4 says clearly, If you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, for you are dead. Now, what does that mean? It says you're dead. You know, you want to be alive in Christ, but you're, de you're dead. That means you're dead to the old sinful nature. That old nature you got from Adam and Eve. For you are dead, and your life is hid now with Christ. And Christ who is, with Christ in Holy Father. And Christ who is your life appear and you appear with him in glory. Now that's amazing word of God. Colossians 3, 1 to 4. Colossians 3, 1 to 4. Set your mind on things above, not things on the earth, for you died and your life is hidden. I say it to our flock on our Sunday services at times, and some in this room have heard it. I pray to be so hid in Christ, like Colossians 3 says, 1 to 4, that when Satan looks to trouble me, all he sees is Jesus. It's like, where is she? <laughs> That's all you want in your life. You want Christ to be so strong, formed in you. And now, that is one very possibility for Christ to be formed in you. And when you suffer, I mean, I have some needs right now that I'm believing God for. Please pray for me. I thank you for that. Scripture says, I really believe the Holy Spirit wants to say this to you folks because some of you are really going through a lot. Romans 8, 18 and 2 Corinthians 4, 18. The sufferings of this world are not to be compared with the glory which will be revealed in us. The glory of God. What is the glory of God, folks? It's his presence. It's his excellence. It's his power. And we are to go from glory to glory, being changed into Christ's image. And I'm talking about glory that's in the here and now, folks, not in the by and by, which will be stronger. I'll prove it to you by a word. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. We turn to the Lord and the veil is taken away, the veil of sin. The Holy Spirit is in us and we have liberty with open face, open heart, this is word for word, 2 Corinthians 3, 17, 18, with open heart, beholding as in a glass the glory of God, being changed into the same image of Jesus from glory to glory and by the Holy Spirit. In our fellowship, we sing this sweet little song. 
from glory to glory, he's changing me, changing me, changing you. From glory to glory, he's changing you, his likeness and image to perfect in you. And that brings revival. The more you radiate Jesus, the more you're going to see revival. We are raised with Christ, seated together with Christ. And I like how it says it in Romans, I believe it's chapter 7, verse 4. It's that we have become dead to the law by the body of Christ, and we are married to him who rose from the dead, that we will bear fruit. You're married to him. That, that's a link forever and ever and ever. So how do I believe that these truths have can become real by blessed Holy Spirit, number one? For the word of God has got the Holy Spirit in it. I love to say that. By the words you speak, when you speak God's word into your life, by the choice of your will, by God's word, we believe and affirm. Stand and rest on God's word. God, help us go forward in resurrection power, living in Christ's lordship in the higher plane. Resurrection power. Come up higher, folks. Come up higher. Let's live in resurrection power. The higher level, blessed by the Holy Ghost, on fire for God. Another word that I say to affirm the death of the old nature that I'm living and walking in the new nature is uh, Luke 9, 23. And I especially mention that because it's very dear to my heart. Because they're Jesus Christ's words out of my mouth to your dear hearts. Christ said, deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, daily, daily. In other words, we need that victory daily. So when you deny yourself, pick up your cross. It's the victory of the cross where Christ died in your place and mine. And when you deny yourself, I 100% believe that's denying your old sinful nature. The old sinful nature is all about me, me, me. What about me? What about my feelings? The new nature is what about Jesus? What would Jesus like? The new nature and the new nature we think like Jesus would think, and we grow to be like Jesus. So it's really important, Luke 9, 23, I believe. You know, folks, the greatest need we have in our nation, no matter where you live, your country, is revival. That is the greatest need. I heard that there was a town, I think the cameraman is the one one of the cameramen today shared with me, when revival hits a community, the police have nothing to do. They probably will play cards. <laughs> revival, revival, revival. Can revival into flames. Pray it into your family. Pray it into your friends and relatives and, and into your life. And the greatest news, as far as I'm concerned, to walk in the Spirit, exude the fruit of the Holy Spirit, is to know, know to experience level, always bearing about in your body the death of Christ, the life. Oh, Father, the life of Jesus Christ be manifest in our lives. Christ can handle what you're going through, beloved. Yes, he can. I know about trying times. Paul knew about trying times. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name and forget not his benefits. Sorry, that's Psalm 103. Forget not his benefits. He forgives your sins, heals your diseases, delivers you from destruction, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, satisfies your mouth with good things to eat, to say, to drink, I add, and he restores your youth as eagles. That's a powerful one for us seniors as I well am. But the verse I really wanted to say at this time was Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouths. Thank you, Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he delivered me from all my fears. What a powerful word, because you and I know fear tries to knock on the door of our lives. And fear can be so sad and so horrible. 
seek the Lord, he'll deliver you from all your fears. Look to the Lord and be enlightened. Your face is not going to be ashamed. That's Psalm 34, I'm still quoting. And then he says, this poor one cried unto God and he heard you and saved you out of all your troubles. Paul had multiple troubles. Uh, three times, I believe he was whipped, 39 stripes, as 40 would kill a man. He was thrown in the deep. Once he was stoned and left for dead, they rallied around him. The next day he was in another town doing revival. The same God Almighty by the Holy Spirit that revived Paul over and over. The same God Almighty that moved through Peter at Gate Beautiful when he said to the lame man from birth, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man was instantly healed. You know, doesn't that prove the power there is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of God Almighty who defeated the world, the devil, the flesh, and that old sinful nature for you and me? There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. God Almighty is in his name. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive this revelation truth today. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Follow Jesus. Don't settle for being a lukewarm, lukewarm Christian with just one foot in heaven. Get a whole lot of heaven in you. Walk in your new nature. Affirm that you will walk in your new nature. Ask God to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and to reveal to you the circumcision and worship him in the spirit and in truth. We of the circumcision need to worship God in the spirit and in truth. Worship him sincerely. We of the circumcision. Now you understand what the circumcision means. It's the spiritual operation of God. The old sinful nature got the death blow. Needs to stay dead so you can soar in your new walk with God. Be on fire for God. Not just have one foot in heaven. No, get a whole lot of heaven in you. It has to do with that old sinful nature put to death, always bearing about in our body the death of Christ. The scriptures to help you to walk in your new nature are in the book of Galatians and Romans for sure. And you know, it's worked for me for 47 years and it'll work for you. God is no respecter of persons, which means he loves us all the same. We're all the same level at the cross. Don't ever look at a minister and think they're way up here and you're down there. No. God loves us all the same. God loves you. He wants you and I to walk victorious. He wants us to be of the circumcision that worship him in the spirit and in truth. Sing a love song to God. When you feel really, really down, praise him. Force it. If you have to, it's a sacrifice of praise because praise removes heaviness. And I know a lot of people are going through a lot of things that are causing you to be heavy and downcast. Burst forth in praise. Praise the living God who loves you. Make up a love song to the King who loves you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Remember, God dwells in our praises. God is enthroned in our praises. And the enemy is made to perish at the presence of God. Amen. Oh, dear ones, it's been such a joy to serve our King Jesus in my 42nd year. But I want a grand slam for Jesus. I want to continue to be on the telecast. But being honest, the cost has raised many thousands. I'm asking for some people that can afford it to contribute $1,000 and more if you can and any one of you, whatever you can manage. Let's get some upfront money to stay on the air. Help us, please. God bless you, amen. Oh, precious ones, in the last few moments, sharing from my heart in Jesus, a few encouraging words about what I have spoken. Out of the death to the old, new life comes, on, comes forth. But this new life is awesome. It's us being like Jesus, us exuding love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, us being able to forgive quickly, 
no matter how deeply we get hurt, us being able to love the unlovely, because that's what God does, God of love. Oh, God loves you so much. And you know, when you ask God to forgive you, instantly you're forgiven. And when you walk in the Spirit, you can do likewise. Be more like Jesus. Let me pray for you. Oh, God of hope, fill me and the viewers. I pray with all peace and joy in believing we may abound in hope. Father, that's Holy Ghost hope I'm asking for us. Holy Ghost hope for the intercessors in this room. Holy Ghost hope, Father. Help them as you're helping me. Lay hold of Holy Ghost hope according to your word in Hebrews. Holy Ghost hope to be anchored to our souls. Help us, Father, even daily deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow you, Jesus. Help us experience that the old sinful nature is put to death with Christ, Lord God, and be renewed in the spirit of our mind and having put on the new man, which after you is created in righteousness and true holiness. Oh, Father, we want to exude Jesus, and we're praying for it now, Lord. Peace like a river envelop your children. And Lord, I ask you to water me and the intercessors that have done this telecast today, this broadcast, Father. Move by the Holy Spirit through the airwaves and bring forth revival in our lives and in our households. I thank you, Father, you hear prayer. I thank you that you love us. Nothing's too hard for you, God. All things are possible with you. And lastly, I pray that you wrap us in your love. Wrap us in your love, Father. I pray it pleases you for a gift of faith, healing, and a miracle to envelop us, Father. In your precious holy presence, come upon us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord's all-powerful name, I and your children that please for this prayer to be answered for them. We just say amen and amen. Please keep in touch. Support the telecast, beloved ones. Amen. Reverend Audrey Mabry invites you to visit the Eternity Club website. Here you can learn the history of the Eternity Club, read Reverend Mabry's testimony, discover other ministries of the Eternity Club, receive a regular ministry update, and connect with us on Facebook and YouTube. We believe that God will use the Eternity Club in a great revival in Canada, and you can be a part. If this telecast has ministered to you, would you please prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner that we may continue to reach out for God's glory. It would be wonderful to hear from you.